I'm gonna make some small changes to the structure of these videos, essentially to summarize some repetitive parts. I got some feedback from a relative who's an editor on Channel 4 News in Britain, so I have to take the feedback seriously. So if you see some small changes from now on, that is why. What is up everyone, welcome to week 7. My waist and chest measurements were down 1 cm this week, every other measurement was the same. As you can see here, my average weight was 96.4 kg, which is only 0.1 kilos less than last week. Now one thing that I'm gonna start doing from now on is showing the present week's calorie and weight statistics in this part of the video. Whenever I'm finished editing each of these videos, the past week is already over, so I have all the numbers ready. So, this week my average weight was actually 95.9 kilos, which is half a kilo down from week 6. This is what I now look like compared to week 1. Although the pose itself is a little bit different, it's hard to replicate it exactly every time, and I am not a bodybuilder and don't want to become one, the visual difference is starting to become pretty damn clear now. As I mentioned last week, I started walking consistently again with my daily step goal being 5000 plus. Actually ended up averaging around 7000 steps a day this week. Feeling really good about walking again, and the steps will get higher as the spring advances further and further. When I started this weight loss vlog series, I said that I would be eating normal food for 2500 calories every day. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you what I've been eating every day for the last six weeks. Now, I personally don't find daily eating videos interesting at all. I couldn't care less about hearing someone explain their food choices for 10 minutes straight. So I'm going to keep this very short and just show you the gist of it. Uh, this preamble will probably be longer than the actual showcase of the meals themselves. All my days have been pretty damn similar. Sometimes I eat three times a day, sometimes four times a day, so this representation will be 90% accurate with some little variations here and there. My appetite isn't particularly high in the morning, so I virtually always start the day with a whey protein shake and an apple. This equals about 220 calories, 31 grams of protein, 16 grams of carbs and 3 grams of fats. Then I usually just drink some coffee and chill around and after about 4 hours I eat pasta, some white bread and a protein ice cream or a protein shake. This equals about 990 calories, 43 grams of protein, 111 grams of carbs and 38 grams of fats. After this, I wait a couple hours, maybe have some more coffee, then I go do my workout, and after that I have half a cheese pizza, which is roughly 686 calories, 33 grams of protein, 78 grams of carbs, and 26 grams of fat. Now, sometimes these time periods between meals are longer than 4 hours, maybe 5 or 6, and I don't actually eat anything else after this. But more often than not, I do have a fourth meal, and it's another whey protein shake and 80 grams of chocolate cereal with 2 deciliters of milk. Totaling 545 calories, 42 grams of protein, 74 grams of carbs, and 7 grams of fats. Now, sometimes this last meal is just whey protein in milk, or oats, or something else totally. Overall, this all totals 2,441 calories, 149 grams of protein, 279 grams of carbs, and 74 grams of fats. From now on, for the longevity of this cut, I'm gonna start changing my food choices a little bit every now and then, switching pasta for potatoes, white bread for rye bread, whey protein for cottage cheese, and adding some more vegetables into my diet. Less calorie-dense foods can help you feel fuller and more satisfied after a meal, but it's not magic. If you're on a thousand calorie deficit, it's hard to feel energetic no matter what you eat. However, I do think eating highly palatable foods is a mistake because they're usually very calorie-dense. This means that you'll be very food-focused all the time, waiting for the next meal, then when you have it, you're not really satisfied because you just wanted more of it. You can take this from me with some experience into this. My first couple cuts, I was eating around 1600 calories a day of baked rolls and whey protein. Not a good idea. I was obsessed with food at this time and it took several months for things to get back to normal after I started eating at a surplus again. Overall, this is kind of a boring answer, but I think it's all about finding the balance between foods that you enjoy and foods that are filling and not very calorie dense. It's not very sustainable to be on a diet that you absolutely hate, and it's also not sustainable to be on a diet where you're obsessed with food all the time. All I did was pack my bag for the gym, and my pulse got up to 120. Will be interesting to see how this goes. Holy shit, I was feeling super weak on this day. I just felt this overpowering weakness and shakiness throughout my body, I was sweaty, and my pulse was really high without even doing anything. I have no idea why this was the case, I didn't get sick or anything, although my girlfriend had been sick for the past two weeks, 
Maybe I experienced some of that, maybe I had low blood sugar, I don't know. Went there anyway and finished the workout. 5x5 five five squats with 3 plates was a nightmare. On incline dumbbell press I got 2 sets of 10 with 35 kilo dumbbells and then had to drop down to 32 and a half kilo dumbbells for the last 2 sets. One arm dumbbell row was actually pretty okay. I got 4 sets of 10 with 37 and a half kilos. But between my sets I literally had to drop down to the floor and sit there for a while because the gym was really full and I didn't want to take a bench just to sit there and rest between sets. Uh, the last time I felt this week during a workout was actually when I went to the gym right after having a terrible diarrhea. So that says something about it. So apparently I burned over 900 calories in my one and a half hour strength workout. This is definitely not true. Uh, the only thing that the watch can measure is your heart rate variability. Whenever it's large, it means you're relaxed. Whenever it's small, it means you're stressed out. And whenever you're stressed out, the watch says that you burned a lot more calories than you really did, so I think that's what's going on now. Uh, maybe I'm getting sick, maybe it's just an off day. Maybe the cut is finally starting to get to me. Uh, we'll get over this, and at least the workout is finally done. Now time to go and die. Wednesday workout was a hell of a lot better. Did my 3x5 deadlifts with 165 kilos here. Moved pretty well. The first set was actually the toughest one, then the second one was really good, and then the third one was pretty good. Also, forget what I said last week about having my hips too low on the deadlift and that I should move them higher, because this week I felt that the complete opposite was true. So, fuck that, I guess. Overhead presses moved really well again this week. The plan is to get up to 63 and a half kilos for 5x5 next week, but I might actually start with 65 kilos and see how that goes. If they all go, then good, that's a PR. If not, then I can just drop some weight off of some of the sets. Despite my body weight not having dropped all that much lately, chin-ups also moved pretty well. I would be very surprised if I can't do these for 5x5 with 15 kilos added next week. Had a better pull-up bar than last week, this time I actually rolled one of those rubbery bands around the bar so that I would have a better grip, and it worked. Friday's high bar squats I did with 125 kilos for 4 sets of 5. The first set actually felt surprisingly heavy, made me feel a little bit hesitant about the weight and whether it will go or not, but then all the other sets actually ended up moving pretty well. I think it was just a matter of misgrooving the first set a little bit. Aside from one heavy set of 5 with 140 kilos a while ago, I haven't really touched heavy weights on this exercise in quite a long time. 5x5 five five bench with 110 kilos actually felt the best the bench has felt in several weeks. If it moves like this next week, then I have no doubt that I will get 112 and a half kilos for 5 sets of 5. Not really a PR, but I am losing some centimeters off of my chest as well as my ass, which means that the range of motion on the bench press will be longer and my arch will get smaller and smaller. Barbell rows were done with 90 kilos for 4 sets of 8 this week. They went okay and it doesn't seem like my grip will become a real problem anytime soon. Form still looks pretty good. A little bit of a chicken head here and there, but I don't really mind about that. No doubt in my mind that 92.5 kilos will go next week. On Saturday's AMRAP workout, I actually only got 35 chin-ups in 7 minutes, which is one less than the past 2 weeks. Within my small sets that I did, I actually failed a couple reps because I was trying to go for too much too fast. But then, interestingly enough, on push-ups I got 112, which is 7 more than last week. And on sit-ups I got 125, which is 10 more than last week. This is real improvement here. My foot support on this last exercise was also pretty damn ghetto. Basically, I took a safety bar from the power rack, then put some plates on top of it so it doesn't move, and then put two kettlebells on both ends on opposite sides so it doesn't fall over either. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta be creative. Thank you for watching this week's video, and I will see you again next week.